Whether you are worshiping with us for the first time or for the first time in a while, whether you are worshiping with us here in the sanctuary or from the comforts of your home, you are welcome here. I have a few announcements this morning. Um, you may have noticed that Susan is not here. Um, Susan is homesick with the shingles. So oh. if you could include her in your prayers, um, I'm sure she would appreciate oh, it. Boy. She's doing okay. Um, I talked to her. Um, she hopes to be back next Sunday, but and we hope she is. So it'll be a quieter service today, unfortunately. Um, but we'll do the best we can and pray that she is well enough to return next week. Please save the date. November 21st will be our annual meeting where we will vote on officers and committees of the church as well as um, adopting a budget for our 2022 year. So just kind of put that in, your, in the back of your heads, um, November 21st after worship. On Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, September 21st, 21st, yes, um, the mums will be in. If you ordered mums, they will be available for pickup on Tuesday between the hours of 3.30 and 6.30. If you have not paid yet, please come with a check made out to Church of Christ Congregational, or cash, if you're bringing cash, please make sure it is the exact amount as our distributors will not have a change to make. So that's Tuesday, 3.30 to 6.30. And if that is not a good time for you, please contact the office and we'll make other arrangements. There is family breakfast next Sunday from 8 to 10 in our parish hall. And this week, Sunday school begins. So if you are a kiddo in grades K through 6, you can go to Sunday school today. We will get to that after our time of unpacking. So as we begin to start our worship service, I invite you to take a deep breath and settle yourself in this moment. Last week, we began a journey. For the next several weeks, we will be training our travelers' mindset and heart and soul, expanding our horizons, our understanding, and our love for our world and its people. We focused last week on leaving home. This week we find ourselves in the encounter with things that feel far from home. Let us read the words to the song Quest together. It can be found in your bulletin. Far from home, we know we're seeing. Everywhere is full of meaning. Different folks expand our world and awe of all the creation and its beings. Jesus often crossed paths with others not from his tribe. He did not shy away. Actually, he most often sought out these opportunities. He met people in their daily lives and locales, such as the Samaritan woman at the well and her community, and engaged with all of them at the point of their deepest yearning. When we seek out and open to new encounters, new people, new relationships, we allow ourselves a spiritual rendezvous with humanity. And in this act, we discover more depth within us than we previously could have ever imagined. How can we shift our perception, redefining strangers as friends we have not met yet? Please join me in our opening prayer, which can be found in your bulletin. Let us pray. So, journey God, your spirit exists everywhere, on every path, inviting us to move with curiosity and compassion for each other. Open us to the depth of our connection, even when it seems the difference is so profound. Show us our shared humanity so that we will know what others love. See that we love the same and share the burdens and the love. Nudge and guide us, we pray. Amen. Weary travelers are part of so many stories as a counter and hospital. 
hospitality. Jesus was surely weary, stopping at the well in the heat of the day for a drink. In his encounter there, a woman gave him a drink. The scripture we will hear about says that Jews and Samaritans do not share things in common. But it seems that they did share something in common at that moment. They shared thirst for water. And ultimately, the water of life that flowed between them from the heart of the divine. Let us remember our own thirst for the living water, especially when we are weary and afraid. Let us pray together our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole hearts and have not loved our neighbors as ourselves through what we have done and left undone. Forgive us when we forget your hospitality and the call to extend it to others. Guide us as we seek to turn around for a greater love. Lead us to travel in your ways. Amen. Brothers and sisters, know that the cup of grace is already extended to us, now and always. At our moments of isolation, Jesus offers us invitation and relationship. He is our constant companion, inviting us to meet in companion with one another, traveling together toward the kingdom of God in love. In Jesus' name, we have been forgiven. Amen. Please join me in a moment of prayer before we have a dramatic interpretation of our scripture reading. You speak to us, Lord, with tongues of wisdom. Let your Holy Spirit now open us to hear with greater clarity the teachings of today, that we may hold dear and yet new ways. What is your will for us? In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to invite Susie and Ryan to come forward. And just remind you to talk louder than you might normally would because you have your masks on. Go and get your husband. 
I don't have a husband. Technically, you are telling the truth, but you have had five husbands and are currently living with a man you are not married to. Sir, it is obvious to me that you are a prophet. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place to worship? Well, at least the Samaritans claim is here on Mount Gerizim, where our ancestors worship. Woman, I tell you that neither is so. The time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. Believe this, a new day is coming. In fact, it's already here. And the importance will not be placed on the time and place of worship, but on the truthful hearts of the worshippers. You worship what you worship what you don't know, while we worship what we do know, for God's salvation and coming through the Jews. The Father is the Spirit, and He is seeking followers whose worship is sourced in truth and deeply spiritual as well. Regardless of whether you are in Jerusalem or on this mountain, if you do not seek the Father, then you do not worship. I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When He comes, He will explain everything to us. I am the Messiah. Just then, his disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking with a woman. But none of them had the nerve to ask, what do you want with her? Or why are you talking to her? The woman went back to the town, leaving her water pot behind. She stopped men and women on the street and told them about what had happened. And because of her testimony, the village of Sikar was transformed. Many Samaritans heard and believed. They approached Jesus and repeatedly invited him to stay with them. So he lingered there for two days on his account. And as he spoke to them, many more came to believe. They began their faith journey because of the testimony of the woman at the well. But when they heard for themselves, they were convinced that Jesus was God's anointed, the Savior sent to rescue the entire world. Here ends our reading. So, I'm going to ask you to be brave and to try something. We are at the time for our time for unpacking, but we need a hymn for the journey, and we don't have someone to play the music for us. But it's not too terribly tricky of a hymn. So I'm going to invite you to open your hymnals to number 181 in the new Christian hymnal, which is the Black Bound Book. We're going to attempt with our very best singing voices and no music to accompany us. First two of the songs. Are you ready? Ready. Okay. Not yet? Okay, I'll give you a couple of seconds because I need everyone's help. I'm going to shut my mic off. (laughs) Ready? Sometimes. 
sometimes they might seem really different from us. They might look different or eat different foods. But we soon find out there are things we have in common. So just like last week, I've got a backpack ready to go as we travel. See it? See it? What's the matter? Oh. Oh. Oh my goodness. I see my trusty travel flashlight turned itself on. I wonder what it's trying to tell me. Let's see what else is in the backpack today. So while I open it, let's sing our song again. You are the light on the hill of people. Like the track across the parking. 
that you didn't have to do, but really you did have to do it. I've been known to say that I look forward to the days with no have-tos, but those don't come along very often. There are tasks and events in our lives that while we don't have to do them, we do. I don't have to water my plants, but if I don't, they die. People don't have to move closer to their aging parents, but really, when it's been determined that it's safer and easier for their well-being, we have to. Students don't have to study for their exams, but if they don't, they may not pass, and that has a domino effect. Sometimes doing things we don't have to do, but really we do have to do, takes courage. Jesus has to get a drink of water, but he doesn't have to get it in Samaria. Samaria wasn't exactly on the way home. The Samaritan woman also has to get water, but she doesn't have to get it from the well in the heat of the day. Except they do. The circumstances of their lives cause them both to be at the well at the very same time, and an opportunity for both is suddenly present. The woman goes to the well at midday because that is the time when she feels she will be safe. Safe from people staring and talking, not to her, but about her. Safe from the uncertainty about whether she is welcome there, and maybe she isn't. If you have ever been left out, you know it can feel worse to see people ignore you than to just stay home from the very beginning. If that's the case, she went during a time it would be safe from that awful feeling about being left out. Knowing you're an outsider, that you don't fit in, is hard, difficult. And regardless of the reasons why, this woman is certainly an outsider. We learn from Jesus that she hasn't led the most stable of adult lives. We know that she has lived with at least six different men, five husbands, and an, un and an unknown number of not husbands. But we don't know why. Did her husbands die? Did her husbands throw her out because she couldn't have children? We don't know what happened. And it really probably doesn't matter. What we do know is that for some reason she went to get water in the middle of the day when it would be the hardest. She went at a time when she knew the chance of her encounter of another living human being was the smallest. Perhaps it was because she was afraid of the stairs and behind her back whispers. Maybe it was because she just didn't know how to fit in with women who hadn't experienced the same kind of loss she had. Perhaps it was because she was asked to stay away. We don't know how she got to this spot in her life, but we can imagine that her life was hard and lonely. She was the last sort of person someone like Jesus should have been talking to. Being a Samaritan would have been enough for Jesus to keep away from her, but she was an outsider among her own people as well. It would have been one thing for Jesus to chat it up with a group of Samaritan men, but for Jesus to talk to her, a woman, that was scandalous. She was unwelcome, and probably, according to many, unwanted. Let that settle in for a minute. Let that settle in without the hows and the whys. They don't matter. We could focus on her past and how that got her to where she was, but she isn't the first and won't be the last person to have a past. What matters is that she was a human, the same as you and me, and that she was unwelcome and unwanted. But Jesus doesn't turn away. In fact, Jesus approaches her. They both have what the other needs. The woman has provided Jesus with water and an opportunity to show the woman that she is loved by God for who she is, fully known and loved regardless. Jesus has provided the woman with the opportunity to see God through him and the realization that she is known and loved. We are constantly being provided with opportunities to see the face of God in others. We often don't take advantage of these opportunities because we are afraid and unsure. Turning away from that which is unfamiliar to us is much easier than trying to cross that often boundaries that we have created to 
get to know the other. But if we follow Jesus' example, we can see that Jesus never turns away. In fact, Jesus often sought out opportunities to engage with and get to know others that were on the margins, outsiders, people who don't fit in. We need to follow Jesus' example and be courageous enough to step out of our comfort zone, see the face of God in others. We don't need to, but we do. As Christians, we are called to love our neighbors as ourselves, and loving our neighbors means not turning away. Loving our neighbors means getting to know them and their stories. Last week's focus of traveling was on the act of leaving home. When we stop to think about that, every time we leave home, we are presented with an opportunity to learn about ourselves and others. This week's focus is on the encounter. An encounter is probably best described as an unexpected experience. As much as, as it would be nice, we cannot plan encounters. Encounters happen when we are open and ready, and circumstances fall into place. Not all encounters feel good from the start, or even at the end, if we're honest. Encounters can be unnerving and sometimes terrifying, but they often change us. And while we can't always control what happens to us, we do have some say in how we respond. When we are given the opportunity to encounter the other, we are called to be like Jesus and not turn away. We heard earlier in our worship liturgy this morning a quote from Rick Steves that travelers are friends we haven't met yet. I like this. Valerie Cower, American activist, documentary filmmaker, lawyer, educator, faith leader, creator of the Revolutionary Love Project, and author of our next book group book, See No Stranger, a memoir and manifesto of revolutionary love, describes strangers in a beautiful way, in a way that I think takes some of the fear of the unknown away. She describes strangers as being a part of her that she does not yet know. When you see your neighbor that you are called to love, and all humans are our neighbors, look at that person and say to yourself, you are a part of me I do not yet know. I think that is so powerful, because we are all connected, and we all have something to offer the other. If only we can recognize it and use our opportunity to make these connections my friend Liz shared a video with me that touched my heart and served as a wonderful example of this type of change that can happen when we encounter the other. We can't show it this morning, but I'm going to tell you about it, and then I will include it in the worship video link that goes out later this afternoon, and the e and our Facebook page, because it's that good. The video starts with a little boy packing a backpack with Twinkies and apple juice. As he runs out the door, his mother asks where he's going, and he says he's headed out to find God. He ends up sitting on a park bench next to a homeless woman. As he starts to eat a Twinkie, he offers one to her. They eat, chat, laugh, and toast with their apple juice. When he runs home in time for dinner, his mother asks, did you find it? The boy responds with, God is a woman and she has the most beautiful smile. The video would be cute if it ended there, but it doesn't. The video flashes back to the woman who tells a friend that she just ate Twinkies with God, but that God is much younger than she expected. <laughs> Beloved ones, we never know what or who we might meet in a day. But perhaps more importantly, we don't know who might have a life-changing encounter through our actions. Each and every day we have encounters or unexpected experiences. With open eyes and open hearts, these experiences can be life-changing. They can be life-giving. One of the UCC's better-known taglines is that God is still speaking. God speaks to the world through us for you and for me and all those chance encounters, sometimes with the unwanted and the unwelcome. We just need to be open and listening. We mustn't turn away. 
We must reach out and open up to the opportunity to see God in each other, to get to know the strangers that are a part of us that we do not yet know. As we continue our travels and venture out into the world full of unexpected experiences, let us be open to encountering others, thereby encountering God, and be changed for the better. Amen. Journaling has been a long time practice of those who travel. Journaling can be especially important as we seek to understand and process our reaction to our experiences. Again this week, we will spend a bit of quiet time with the travel journal pages provided in your worship guide. During this time of silence, you are invited to spend a few minutes either journaling with pen to paper or journaling quietly in the recesses of your minds and hearts, whichever is more comfortable for you. The reflection prompts will also be posted in the comment section for those of you worshiping at home. Included in our prayers this morning are prayers and intentions lifted up from the World Council of Churches Ecumenical Prayer Cycle, reminding us that we are all connected. This day we will include prayers for and around Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay. Let us continue our time of prayer. God of justice and love, mercy and hope, be with us this day. As we gather together as a family of faith to connect with you and one another, we have so much to be thankful for. We give you thanks for new starts and new beginnings. We give you thanks for individuals, churches, and other organizations who remain committed to seeking healing, justice, and truth. We give thanks for the ways in which those of different faiths and ethnicities work together for the common good and for the needs of people and creation. And we give thanks for how churches, from out of what people are experiencing, have led global ecumenical work for an economy that serves life. In addition to being thankful for all of these blessings, 
those we've named, and those on our hearts. We pray for and ask that you grant greater respect for indigenous people and greater acceptance of all people across boundaries of ethnicity and religion. We pray for the protection of children from violence and abuse and recognition of their rights and dignity. We pray for those who protect and care for the region's threatened soils, forests, waters, and glaciers. We pray for truth and justice and continuing investigations to find those responsible for crimes against humanity and continued healing for those affected. We lift up to you Janet and Mary, Maria, Dennis, Tim, Maureen's sister and niece, Gigi and Tiffany. We lift up to you Jackie and Doyle as he traveled out west to see his family. We pray for Sandy and our Michigan sister Lauren and for Susan. And we pray for those whose names we lift up to you now. Holy One, Lord of the wind and the sea, of the mountains and the valleys, of the world and of the church. In the midst of fear and insecurity, give us trust and hope in you. And may your strong mercy calm the whole earth. All this we ask in the strong name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Like the people from Israel long ago, children of God long for freedom in every age. We long for freedom from injustice and in brokenness. We long for freedom from everything that holds us back from God and the new life God promises. That is what the ministry of this church is about, walking with God on our very long journey, remembering God's goodness each step of the way, and feeling God's presence with us. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. If you would like to make an offering, you may do so on the table behind the last pew in the sanctuary on your way out. You may make an online donation on our website, www.goceanchurch.com. <coughs> and if you would like to mail in your donation, you may do so at, to P.O. Box 216. I'm not going to ask you to be brave and sing our closing hymn, because I'm not that brave. <laughs> so... We'll, in lieu of our closing hymns, we will now share together our common commission.
traveling beyond your preconceptions and embracing the infinite delight of the earth and its people. And may the Creator continue your unfolding, the Christ accompany the deeper knowing, and the Spirit enliven your growing, until one day we all gather in the kingdom of